maybe everyone here knows about the, the work of Burton Folsom in his book, The Myth of the Robber Barons, and I, I cite him extensively and, and add some new material to that. Uh, and, and what the myth is about the robber barons is exactly as Burton Folsom uh, says in, in his great little book, is that some of the early entrepreneurs, John D. Rockefeller, Cornelius Vanderbilt, James J. Hill, people like that, were genuine entrepreneurs, and he calls them market entrepreneurs. They made their money by providing the masses with better products and cheaper products, period. But there were others who made their money a more dishonest way, such as Leyland Stanford, who used his political connections. He was a senator, a United States senator and governor of California, to have a law passed that essentially made competition in the California railroad business illegal. And even I could make money in business if I had a law making competition illegal. And so, uh, even though I'm a college professor. And so, and these are uh, what you might call political entrepreneurs. So some of the robber barons were robbers, the ones who, who looked to politics and became mercantilists, made their money essentially by ripping off the consumer with the help of the government. Uh, and they, so they deserve the criticism. But then you had, you had people like John D. Rockefeller. How did he become wealthy? Well, by reducing the price of refined oil from 30 cents to 8 cents from 1869 to 1885. That's how he did it. He became the cheapest uh, producer of refined kerosene, refined oil, and he drove down prices for decades of these things. And, uh, and when you think of it, uh, you know, the uh, Americans couldn't even, uh, the, uh, the lower income Americans couldn't even uh, light their homes in, in, in the post-Civil War era because it was too expensive. And Rockefeller at least gave them uh, the means by which they could have light after sunset. Uh, and, uh, and so I think just that, I think, is more benefit to the American people than all the politicians in the history of the Republic uh, created, in my, in my opinion. And so uh, that's how Rockefeller made his money. Cornelius Vanderbilt got his start by driving Robert Fulton out of business. Robert Fulton, the steamship operator, had a, a government uh, monopoly on the Hudson River. And uh, Cornelius Vanderbilt, as a young man, came around and figured out a way to, uh, to uh, compete illegally with Robert Fulton uh, by charging nothing for transportation and making his money by selling food on his boat. And the, the police, the state police, chased him up and down the Hudson River and, and until they just gave up. And, and he drove Robert Fulton out of, bus out of business. But Fulton was the mercantilist. He was on the government uh, dole. Uh, he, he thought he had a protected monopoly, but Vanderbilt drove him out. And, so, and then, of course, he went on to, to be the great railroad entrepreneur after that. And so this story of the robber barons is half true and half untrue. There are people like, uh, uh, that were robbers, but it was only when they formed partnerships with government. If, in the free market, you can't rob anybody. The only, the only way to make money is to, is to persuade people that it's in their interest to take your product or your service in return for some of their money. And uh, uh, the great James J. Hill built a transcontinental railroad without a, a dime in government subsidies. He competed against all the government subsidized railroads, and he built a better railroad, he built it faster, uh, and had better service. He subsidized the towns along the way because he knew that uh, if they didn't prosper, he wouldn't prosper with his railroad. He gave them free grain, free, free education about farming. He, uh, he, he paid the Indians for the right of way across their land with livestock or money. He didn't call in the army to kill them. Uh, like the government subsidized railroads did. And so it's a great story of a market entrepreneur uh, succeeding, building a transcontinental railroad.